All right, guys, so here is our front end setup. We've got the original A arms, uh, but we put new ball joints in to fit the 80s spindle, new calipers, new rotors, new brake pads, and we also got drop springs from CPP. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. So, today I'm going to discuss what we decided to do for our front end swap. Okay, first and foremost, we went and got... We found an ADC-10, a friend of ours had a, a frame with the power steering box, spindles, linkages, everything. It, it didn't have a cab on it or anything, but we got it for 150 bucks. So that wasn't a bad deal, so we decided we went and picked up this frame. And I decided at that point, okay, you know, it's, it's going to be worth it to go ahead and put power steering on the 64 seats in, go ahead and put power brakes, disc brakes. Okay, so one issue we're running into currently, and I'm going to make another video about, is what type of linkages we're going to use in order to be able to use a power steering box. The original steering box off the 64 C10 is not in the same location as an 80 style C10 steering box, so we've got a couple hoops we've got to jump through in order to uh, figure out what we're going to do about that. So, <clears throat> so a couple things we ran into that we had issues with. The ADC-10, the driver side lower A-arm was bent. It's like as if the driver of the truck at one point hit a curb or hit something really big. So there was like a bow in the bottom of the A-arm. So we decided we needed to go ahead and use the 64 C-10's original A-arms. But the problem is, is those ball joints, which were shot anyway, do not fit into the 80 style spindle, right? That's the problem. So what we decided to do, we ordered new ball joints and we were able to cut the top ones out of the original 64 C10 arms and we pushed the bottom ones out with the press. Okay, so as you can see here, the stock ball joints, they don't have a way for you to be able to get the tops off without cutting them out. So what I did is I got a cutoff wheel and I put X's in the center of each one of those studs, so at the top, I guess studs, whatever you want to call them, holding the top ball joint in, I would get the cutoff wheel, put an X in each one of them, and then come back in with an air hammer and get kind of a, a chisel at the end of your air hammer, and I would pop all the heads off. By making an X in the center of them made it infinitely easier to pop it off into pieces, opposed to trying to get it all at once. If you try to get it all at once, you're just going to jack up the A-arm and it's not going to look good, and, and you're probably not even going to be able to get the stud out either. So once you get them knocked out, then you can use a punch and you can knock the rest of the stud out from the top and just pop it out. Now, if you look over here on the bottom one, we have this press for this exact reason. So as you can see, you can push the, the ball joint out with the press and you can also make the new ball joint seat into the lower A-arm using this press as well. Something else I want to touch on is we did get new springs. We're doing a 3-5 drop. And we got these springs on clearance, but I found a place that you can buy them off eBay and you won't have to pay any tax depending on the state that you live in. So I'll go ahead and put that in the video as well. The rotors off of the ADC-10 were completely shot. I tried to get them turned. They said there is no way they could turn them. They've been turned too many times. So what we decided to do is just we bit the bullet and we got new rotors. The only things that we took off the ADC-10 were the steering box, which we don't know if it's any good. It came with a power steering pump, but I, again, I don't know if that's good either. And the spindles and linkages. And the reason that we kept the linkages is we don't know if we're going to use the stock 64 C10 linkages, like the drag link, tie rods, etc. Even though they look like they're pretty shot, or if we're going to use the ADC10 linkages. And if we do decide to use the ADC10 linkages, we're going to have to change the location of the idler. And so I, I, there's just a whole other dynamic that comes into that completely. So in essence, the changes that we made, we got new shocks, springs, calipers, rotors, and ball joints. We kept the original 60s A-arms, we cleaned them up by sandblasting them, shooting them with some epoxy paint, and I think they turned out really good. So, um, to do about the C10. What is the deal? We took the front end components off of it, took the rear end out of it, paid 150 bucks. I was able to clean up to sell the three-speed automatic tranny for 200 bucks, and I was able to sell the motor out of it for 75 bucks. So, got 275 bucks. So we were able to order the rest of the new parts and break even really on it. So that was that ended up being pretty good. I mean, that's what I would suggest to do 
if you're going to go that route, it's very expensive. Things can add up really quickly if you buy everything new. So why don't you go try to find a, an old truck that you can rob all the parts off of that you need. Before I found the lower A arm on the driver's side was bent, we were just going to drop the whole cross member out and put it into the 64 C10. So something cool about these C10s is that the cross members actually drop out completely. So you can just do a complete cross member swap. But Seeing as how we couldn't use the lower A-arm on the driver's side, I just decided to keep the cross number that was in it. I kept the original A-arms, and like I said, the only thing we switched out were the ball joints and then put the spindles on, and everything worked out well there. Another thing that we had to do, we ordered new bearings and packed them. The old ones were, were shot as well, so. I'll show you guys kind of around the shop. Right here, we just cleaned up everything in here. We've got A-arms. Uh, we actually painted the new calipers, which actually are pretty cheap. We got them in O'Reilly's for a little under 20 bucks. And painted the red caliper paint, uh, cleaned up the uh, spindles and everything, and had these trailing arms also uh, sandblast powder coated. And what we did in order to clean this stuff up, we used this over here. Uh, this is just a uh, just regular cabinet sandblaster. Just stuck them all in there, sandblasted them up, painted them up, and it was good from that point. we're going to a five lugs so that means that we're going to either have to order a kit which from what I can see is very pricey and I'll be making a video over what we decide to do with the rear end but either way we're going to change it to a five lug could consider keeping it a six lug and just ordering rims that are five lug in the front and six lug in the back that cover up the lug so that way nobody ever sees it but I feel like in order to do this the right way we need to be able to do a five on five consistently all the way around so whether it, I'll let you know in an upcoming video if we decide to simply have the axles redrilled or if we order a kit, we'll, we'll see. So, All right guys, that pretty much does it for us today. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, give us a like. I'll see you guys next week.